NewsBud is a truly independent alternative because it is 100% people funded. Without you, we cannot build the independent news source that we, the people, deserve. Visit kickstarter.com and support NewsBud. Free speech is not for the faint of heart. As George Orwell, author of 1984, noted, if liberty means anything at all, it means the right to tell people what they do not want to hear. Clearly, free speech is not for those who are easily offended, readily intimidated, or who need everything wrapped in a neat and tidy bow. Free speech is often messy, foul-mouthed, obscene, intolerant, undignified, insensitive, cantankerous, and volatile. Unfortunately, our appreciation for a robust freedom of speech has worn thin over the years. In fact, many Americans have become fearfully polite, careful to avoid offense, and largely unwilling to be labeled intolerant, hateful, closed-minded, or any of the other toxic labels that carry a badge of shame today. We've come to prize civility over freedom. Most of all, too many Americans held hostage by their screen devices and the talking heads on their television sets have lost the ability to think for themselves. Societies that cherish free speech relish open debates and controversy and in turn produce a robust citizenry who will stand against authoritarian government. Indeed, oppressive regimes of the past have understood the value of closed mouth, closed minded citizens, and the power inherent in controlling speech and thus controlling how a people view their society and government. Fast forward to the present. We in the United States have a government with a ravenous appetite for power and a seeming desire to turn the two way dialogue that is our constitutional republic into a one way dictatorship. Emboldened by phrases such as hate crimes, bullying, extremism, and microaggressions, the government is whittling away at free speech, confining it to carefully constructed free speech zones, criminalizing free speech when it skates too close to challenging the status quo, and shaming it when it butts up against politically correct ideals and muzzling it when it appears dangerous. Free speech, thus, is no longer free, folks. Nor is free speech still considered an absolute right or an essential liberty, even by the government which is entrusted by the Constitution with protecting free speech. Instead, we've entered into an egotistical, insulated, narcissistic era in which free, free speech has become regulated speech to be celebrated when it reflects the values of the majority and tolerated otherwise unless it moves so far beyond our political, religious, and socioeconomic comfort zones as to be rendered dangerous and unacceptable. Consider some of the kinds of speech being targeted for censorship or outright elimination. First, offensive, politically incorrect, and unsafe speech. Disguised as tolerance, civility, and love, political correctness has resulted in the chilling of free speech and the demonizing of viewpoints that run counter to the cultural elite. Consequently, College campuses have become hotbeds of student-led censorship, trigger warnings, microaggressions, and red light speech policies targeting anything that might cause someone to feel uncomfortable, unsafe, or offended. Saying God bless you after somebody sneezes. Oh, that would be a microaggression because of different religions. Second, bullying, intimidating speech. Warning that school bullies become tomorrow's hate crime defendants, the U.S. Department has led the way in urging schools to curtail bullying, going so far as to classify teasing as a form of bullying and rude and hurtful text messages as cyberbullying. Third, there's hateful speech. Hate speech, speech that attacks a person or group on the basis of attributes such as gender, ethnic origin, religion, race, disability, or sexual orientation, is the primary candidate for online censorship. Corporate internet giants such as Google, Twitter, and Facebook are in the process of determining what kinds of speech will be permitted online and what will be deleted or censored. Then fourth, there's dangerous anti-government speech. As part of its unveiled war on extremism, the government has joined with the tech industry to establish a task force to counter online propaganda by so-called terrorists hoping to recruit support or plan attacks. 
In this way, anyone who criticizes the government online is considered an extremist and will have their content reported to government agencies for further investigation or deleted. The upshot of all this editing, parsing, banning, and silencing is the emergence of a new language, what George Orwell referred to as a newspeak, which places the power to control language in the hands of the totalitarian state. Under such a system, language becomes a weapon to change the way people think by changing the words they use. The end result is control by the government. In totalitarian regimes, also known as police states, where conformity and compliance are enforced at the end of a loaded gun, the government dictates what words can and cannot be used. In countries where the police state hides behind a benevolent mass and disguises itself as tolerance, the citizens censor themselves, policing their words and thoughts to conform to the dictates of the mass mind lest they find themselves ostracized or placed under government surveillance. Even when the motives behind the control of societal language appear well-intentioned, discouraging racism, condemning violence, denouncing discrimination and hatred, inevitably, the end result is the same, intolerance, indoctrination, and citizens who become childlike and weep or hide from certain words. This is what is known as the snowflake generation. What does all this mean? While we're still technically free to speak, in reality, we are only as free to speak as a government official or corporate censor may allow. The U.S. Supreme Court has long been the referee in the tug of war over the nation's tolerance for free speech and other expressive activities protected by our First Amendment. The Supreme Court's role as arbiter of justice in these disputes is undergoing a radical sea change. Except in cases where it has no vested interest, the court has begun to advocate for the government's outsized interests, ruling in favor of the government in matters of war, national security, commerce, and speech. When asked to choose between the rule of law and government supremacy, this court tends to side with the government. In the 225 years since the First Amendment to the United States Constitution was adopted, the rights detailed in that amendment, which assures the American people of the right to speak freely, worship freely, peacefully assemble, petition the government for a redress of grievances, and have a free press, have certainly taken a beating, but none more so than the right to free speech. Nowhere in the First Amendment does it permit the government to limit speech in order to avoid causing offense hurting someone's feelings, safeguarding government secrets, protecting government officials, discouraging bullying, penalizing hateful ideas and actions, eliminating so-called extremism, combating prejudice and intolerance, and the like. Sadly, in the war being waged between free speech purists who believe that free speech is an absolute right and those who believe that free speech should be regulated, the censors are winning. Free speech zones, bubble zones, trespass zones, anti-bullying legislation, zero tolerance policies, and hate crime laws dreamed up by politicians and prosecutors have conspired to corrode our core freedoms. If we no longer have the right to tell a census worker to get off our property, Dear please Thank get you. off my property. Please, excuse me, please get off my property. I told you to get off my, I asked you to get off my property. You said, I don't have to. I don't have to. And I have a, a federal right to be here. If we no longer have the right to tell a police officer to get a search warrant before they dare walk through our door. I'm recording everything that's happening now. Stop talking because they're talking okay, about so We're going to come inside. Just let you know that. You're going to come inside? Without a warrant, sir. You're going to come inside without a warrant? Probable cause, you're going to kick my door down. There is no domestic violence. There is no domestic violence. Between two people, I'm right here. Oh, man, How I many children this are in the house? There is one child in the house and one is playing outside. Officer, there is one child. Why are you guys not coming out? Why are you not coming out? Because we don't live in a police state, sir. Martial law has not been established in this country. Okay, okay, can you do us a favor? All get down on your ground, get down on the ground. Put your hands behind your back because we're going to kick the door. He can't you record have... if his hands are behind his back. We need documentation of this violation of their civil rights. Stay away from the door, sir. He's got his hand up. You're going to kick my door. You kicked my door down.
You kicked my door down. Get on the ground. You kicked my door down. Yes, we did. Get on the ground. No, you have no right to be in here. You have no right to be in here. You have no right to be in here. You don't you have no right to be in here. Do not touch her! You are assaulting her! If we no longer have the right to stand in front of the Supreme Court wearing a protest sign or approach an elected representative to merely share our views, if we no longer have the right to voice our opinions in public, no matter how hateful, prejudiced, intolerant, misguided, or politically incorrect they might be, then we do not have free speech. What we have instead is regulated, controlled, government-approved speech, and sadly, the majority of American citizens continue to march in lockstep with a police state. Just as surveillance has shown to stifle and smother dissent, keeping a populace cowed by fear, government censorship gives rise to self-censorship, breeds compliance, and makes independent thought all but impossible. The First Amendment is a steam valve. It allows people to speak their minds, air their grievances, and contribute to a larger dialogue that hopefully results in a more just world. When there is no steam valve, when there is no one to hear what the people have to say, frustration builds, anger grows, and people become more volatile and desperate to force a conversation. The problem as I see it, it is that we've lost faith in the average citizen to do the right thing. We've allowed ourselves to be persuaded that we need someone else to think and speak for us. The result is a society in which we have stopped debating among ourselves stop thinking for ourselves, and stop believing that we can fix our own problems and resolve our own differences. In short, we have reduced ourselves to a largely silent, passive populace content to watch and not act. In this way, we have become our own worst enemy. As former Supreme Court Justice Louis Brandeis once pointed out, freedom requires courage. I'm quoting here, those who won our independence by revolution were not cowards. They did not fear political change. They did not exalt order at the cost of liberty. Rather, they were courageous, self-reliant men with confidence in the power of free and fearless reasoning applied through the processes of popular government. In other words, the founders did not fear the power of free speech. Rather, they embraced it, knowing all too well that a nation without a hearty tolerance for free speech, no matter how provocative, insensitive, or dangerous, will be easy prey for a police state where only government speech is allowed. What the police state wants is a nation of sheep that will meekly march in lockstep with its dictates. What early Americans envisioned was a nation of individualists who knew exactly when and how to tell the government to go to hell. It's time to wake up America, get formed, get active, and stay in the battle. Tune in to Battlefield America every Tuesday on Newsbud. You our generous supporters and community members are the reason we exist. You are the power that has kept us operating and expanding towards this amazing success. And you are the sole determinant of the continuation and steady expansion of Newsbud operations. Please join us. Join the Newsbud movement by kindly and generously pledging towards this 100% people-funded media with integrity. Yes, we have accomplished a lot, but this is only the beginning, and that is my promise to you.